Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to another video. Let's jump into it. Is it possible to take your trades straight off the range chart, meaning a lower time frame chart without even possibly looking over or just kind of being neglectful to look over at the higher time frame? For instance, like my 60 range higher time frame chart. If you've been following the channel, you know that it's possible. I do it. Um, day in day out you know when the market may be ranging i'm looking for opportunities from the lower time frame chart yes i talk about just uh the my cornerstone of my trading the strategy i use about you know covering multi-chart confluence you know marking a higher time frame or higher base chart zones whether it's supply and demand because that's how i trade and then just scaling down you know, marking or finding zones within each zone, in a sense, you know, uh, we've had people or, or traders on the channel, uh, especially on the Discord, they call it clustering, because that's basically what it is. We're looking for proximity on multi-confluence uh, charts, meaning having paired charts to where uh, from the higher time frame or higher base charts, moving or scaling down to our lowest uh, base chart or lower time frame chart. Um, I don't trade time-based charts, guys. I don't trade five minutes, eighty, sixty, or whatever the case is. I trade range-based charts only. Okay. Um, a lot of people have converted over to range-based charts, and you know I'm not going to speak for them, but for me, it's just clear to the eye, and that's why I trade it. Um, I've explained this many, 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 uh, and multiple times over on the Discord, and answered in many uh, um, comments or DMs. Okay. That's the only reason why I trade it. So people have, or traders have, uh, really. Taking a look, I guess, after uh, seeing me trade, watching videos, and, you know, have sent me feedback saying it does look clean to the eye of them, and they switched over. They switched from time-based or tick-based, and now I'm trading range-based charts, and, but whatever works for you, you stick with it, okay? This video is not about that. This video is just really simply, is it possible to trade um, off-range charts on a lower time frame? Yes, it strictly is. I mean, I do it uh, time and time again, especially when the market is actually ranging, and um, a lot of times, you know, I may be, I'll say this, neglectful to even look at the higher time frame because I've, I've been doing this for so long. Uh, I can look at my lower time frame 12 range chart and um, just simply take trades from that, you know. But if you're a beginner trader, someone starting off, I will really and highly recommend, like I always say, stick to the overall direction of what you see on a higher time frame chart and trade in that direction so if the higher time frame is bearish then trade with bearish sentiment taking shorts back at an area of supply now i'm gonna pull up my 12 range chart this is my higher time frame um or higher base 60 range chart hopefully you guys can see me it's evening time my time and uh the lighting is not as good but anyways um so 12 o'clock today i'm gonna show you from the higher time frame real quick Oh, not 12 o'clock, I'm sorry, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock today, what do we see here? The market started making a push to the upside, and it did that for the remaining part of the day. Actually, shortly after the market opened up, after we had this little push to the downside, it started moving higher, and it started to uh, started to take out um, uh, mining areas of structure back to the upside, or internal structure, I like to call it that as well. But I'm gonna move down to my lower time frame chart. I'm not even gonna like, you know, I'm not gonna pay close attention to what's going on on the higher time frame, all right? Or marking zones up on there. I'm strictly gonna show you how you can mark zones up on the uh, lower time frame, okay? 12 range chart and, and and trade that way, all right? If you choose to now, I'm saying if you're used to trading and marking, you know, chart marking your chart up from a higher time frame and scaling down and finding those zones uh, using that multi-chart confluence uh, strategy that I talk about many times in the video or in the videos. They continue doing so because I'm sure it's, it's, it's working for you. Like I always say, stick with it. All right. So, but on the lower time frame here, um, once we see structure breaks to the upside, all right, and it's the same thing. Once we see structure breaks to the upside and we see the market pull back to key areas of supply or demand, you can take them. Uh, but get be mindful of this right here. Okay, I'm gonna say this: the trading opportunities or the area in which you can trade. The uh, more you scale down or move down to a lower base or lower time frame chart, that area is going to be narrow. OK, so you must understand what you're looking at and know when to get in and where to get out. All right. Simp simply put now down here around 10, what do we see? The market starts making uh, higher highs and higher lows. Please uh, disregard the green box that's that or a rectangle. Uh, that's a zone from a higher time frame. And this is a zone uh, where I marked off earlier uh, to where you, where you could have gotten to a trade. Uh, excuse me. Uh, once the market 
uh, broke to the upside here, pulled back. It was a little demand area to go along, but don't pay any attention to that specifically. Um, but what we see here, we're just going to follow the direction off of the 12 range lower time frame chart. All right. So we see the market breaking structure to the upside. All right. And it pulls back here and it breaks higher. This is aggressive buying to the upside. Lots of um, a buying. So there's a demand zone resting back here. And I'm not sure if it got back to that zone today. Just, just take a look here. No, it kept going up to the upside. Actually, let me see something right quick. I don't even know if it did or not. Uh, let me grab this line right here because it'll make it easier for me because I want to see if it ever did get back to that area. No, it didn't. It kept climbing up today. Okay, so we'll keep, we'll keep, we'll keep moving. But what I want to show you here, all right, is some areas on which you could have uh, just using the 12 range chart, taking trades from without even looking over at the higher time frame. Again, higher time frame is king and uh, it works best in your favor if you're trading in the direction of the higher time frame. But, you know, if you know how to restructure, just follow on the lower time frame and looking for small little scalps, you can do that. Do so. And that's what I'm trying to show you here. Uh, an easy way to do it. So what we see is the market is pushing higher and higher. Okay. Breaks up, aggressive buying, pulls back. Breaks up, uh, aggressive buying right here. Now, when this can, what we see right here, I'm going to blow this up is, excuse me, um, the market making an aggressive attempt or aggressive uh, push to the upside. That's lots of buying. You should know by now. Who's doing that or making those type moves? It's the institutions. Um, so they're trying to fill in or, or fill orders as quick as they can to push the market to the upside. And what happens is when we see imbalances where there's, there's, there's gaps uh, within that move from, from here to here, the market at some time, at some point, has got to come back and correct itself and, and fill in those imbalances. And lots of times, well, what happens then is that as a retail trader, what you can assume is back here in this area here is that when the market comes back there, that you can look for an opportunity to tra take a trade going back up with the institutions because they're trying to, you know, they have orders more so resting on the table right here. So when the market comes back, they're going to try to fill the rest of their orders to, to, to um, in hopes to make the market go or push push the market up again all right and that's what we want to do as retail traders is just ride the carpet with them wherever you see these um aggressive areas of buying or selling in this case here this is a demand setup right here now yes this last um this candle here this green candle it did break above here but look this imbalance is resting right here there's a very small imbalance resting right here right here even at the zone so we'll mark this zone off right here i'm going to bring this down okay there it goes again all right, uh, right here, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because you guys probably should probably know this by now, but if you're a beginner, um, well, first of all, I don't recommend trading strictly off of uh, the lower time frame chart or your entry chart if you are a beginner trader. Learn how to trade in confluence with the higher time frame and possibly even uh, educate yourself on the strategy I talk about you know, using multi-chart confluence, you know, using two to three charts, being able to draw zones up, um, and I talk about that in multiple, multiple videos here in this channel to where you're looking or marking a higher time frame zone, then moving down to the lower time frame zone and looking for, for instance, if it's a demand setup, mark the higher time frame demand zone or a, a, a higher time frame demand zone and then look for a, a, a demand zone set up on your, your lower entry chart. OK, uh, so anyways, we're just talking about taking trades from the lower time frame 12 range chart in this case here just strictly. OK, and all you're doing is following structure. So that's the key to it right there in the, re the recipe. Is being able to follow structure uh, on the lower time frame strictly, all right? And, and the more you do this, the easier it gets. So we've got to push up here, pull back, break up, pull back, break up, and then the market comes down, all right? Yes, we did break structure back to the downside right here, meaning when the market pushed down here, it broke below this area here at 730 and a half, all right? But this is an area of a, a demand right here, okay? And there's an imbalance. There's actually two small imbalances. Let's see. Um, yeah, small imbalance here and another one resting very small right here. So it, it's got to fill that area, you know, not saying it's going to happen immediately, but it does come back down there. Okay. Even though this is a, what I consider a low probability zone, because when this green candle here broke above that last bearish down candle right there, the wick of that next candle came back and filled or tapped back into that zone. But like I said, like, like I talk about, uh, in prior videos, there's imbalances resting right here. So if there's an imbalances resting right here, right, right there, and they need to get filled, then that means that 
you know, that's an area of interest that still is on the table, okay? Because more than likely, if there are unfilled orders here, they're going to try to fill those orders and the market's going to go back up. So when the market comes back down here, I'm looking for something to happen uh, at this demand area right here, right? Aggressive buying, it comes back. We got this breaker structure to the downside, but this is demand. So before I even get to the trade, I'm already I'm already sizing up where I can take the market back up to, at least to the key area of, of, of resistance above. And I see that we have multiple areas where there are imbalances resting right above as well. So in this general area right here, looking and following the price action on the way down, as it taps in here, then I'm looking for a break in a uh, a break and close of a candle above the last bearish candle which is this candle here the moment we break there at say 30 and a half or 30 say 30 and a half i'm long and i'm going to take it back up to this area of resistance here so if you're getting 30 and a half look i mean you're picking up yourself six points uh or five and a half five or five points right there pretty easy just scalping off of the lower time frame entry chart okay five point scalps here and there add up at the end of the day okay so what does the market do then it pushes up it comes down all right and it looks as if it's trying to trying to run lower right but it doesn't break this area right here okay it doesn't break below this, this this level it then pushes back to the upside right here so then it's taking out these these highs resting right there okay so let's move on now so with this area right here being area of demand yeah I mean, we got aggressive buying to the upside it comes back but look here what it does it pushes lower and and when it breaks below the demand area right here i'm no i'm no longer interest, it, interested interested it, it becomes invalid all right, so the market pushes lower, then it breaks back to the upside right here. Okay, we break this area structure right here at 748. And as we break this area structure to the upside, we got small little uh, swings that are pushing pushing up that aid in the break of structure, right? So there's a small area of demand resting right here. There's a small area of, of demand resting right here as well. And as you can see, look what happens. It pushes up, pulls, pulls back, break structure to the upside. There's a small area of demand right here, right here in this area here. The market comes back to it. And I mean, you can look to take this trade here if you look to the left hand side of your chart and you knew it was resting out here. So if you waited, you saw this hammer candle here close to the upside, took it. At least you could take it to run the high right here at, at 752 and three quarters, right? But let's say you didn't get that trade. It comes back down. Is this a demand zone right here? Yes, this is this is demand uh, coming out of this area right here as well. Uh, but the thing about it is, is that when it pulls, when it broke this. Uh, last bearish candle on the swing here to the upside this candle here came back to wick up and tap that that um, demand area but pay close attention because there is an imbalance resting inside of a zone right here so this small zone right here take a look take a take, take, take a look at it okay there's an imbalance resting from here to the bottom end of this wick of this candle right here there's an imbalance there so the market comes there is it still valid as a place where the market can reject it of course so when the market gets there we look for the uh, the break and close of a candle above the last bearish candle. Take it. Where does it go? We're looking for it. Uh, but if you look at fall price action, what took place here, you can say, okay, the market's going to at least break the high here and come up here and test the remaining area of this imbalance resting right here. Okay, very small imbalance area right here. All right, so maybe you got in here at uh, 43 and a quarter, and you just take it back up to fill in 48. So you pick yourself up maybe four points there. You know, if you got lucky, five points right there. Another five points of profit. So then what do we see the other market doing here? Okay, it starts to break to the downside here. All right, it's breaking structure to the downside. And as we're moving lower, we're breaking through areas of structure to back to the downside. Okay, we were once going up, now we're coming down. Just fall on the flow, fall on the flow of market structure, okay? Uh, we start to break structure, okay? Uh, we push lower. We got aggressive selling that took place right here. This is an area of supply right here. We're going to mark that. Okay, pay attention. Now this is an untested area of hot, and it is a high probability area of supply right here. Breaks lower, didn't maybe pull back. We break again, break structure, pull back, break structure, and then it comes back up here and taps into this supply area right here, right here. Now you pay attention what took place here this was a push up a swing to the upside with a break of structure to the upside here that took out say 741 and or 742 i'll say 741 okay it taps in it, to that supply area look what happens the moment it taps into that supply area look what happens all right see how it doesn't close inside or go into the zone here i'll talk about that in multiple videos the moment the market starts to it taps into a zone and starts to pull away from it meaning with the wick this probably at the time i'm not sure without going back and see a market replay but i can imagine that when it hit that 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 zone there okay hit the zone let me see 
Did it, did it hit it to the tick though? Let's see. Let's move it away. Oh yeah, it hit it to the tick. I mean, to the tick. Hit it right to the tick. When it hit that zone there, I can imagine this bearish candle here, the wicker was probably even even larger before it actually closed. It probably kind of bounced around. But it, what it did was, anytime I see a, a, a tap into a zone, in this case here, to a supply zone, and then it starts to wick away from it real quick without, you know, pushing deeper into the zone, that's a very serious sign of rejection. And when I see that, I'm looking already, okay, where can this thing go to, you know, without a doubt. There's imbalances resting within this swing right here. So the moment that it closed to the downside right here, I'm looking forward to come down and feel, um, come on, give me one second, my computer kind of, I'm not sure what happened there. But anyways, this candle closed right here. I'm looking forward to come down and test this area here, small area of imbalance right here. Come down and test this area here. All right, small area of imbalance here. And there's an area of imbalance resting right here. So there's three areas of imbalance resting inside of this, or within this, this, this swing right here. So. It closes at uh, 40 and a half. It comes down here to 39, you know, 39, okay? And then it, it, it pulled back, of course, of course, but actually it came down a little lower than that. Actually, when it came down with the, with the next uh, bearish candle here, it filled in the imbalance here and it filled in the remaining part of the imbalance here. So if you got in here at 40 and a half and even took out right here at 37 and a half, then you, you pick yourself up three points there. Again, this is, this is the lower time frame 12 range chart. You know, you, you're scalping, you, you're doing what I like to call micro scalping at this point, picking up at, you know, five points at a minimum or more, you know, they're just depending. Uh, but there's also an imbalance resting right here. The market pulls back, okay? And what you can look for is that when the market pulls back here, is it going to close with another bearish candle to the downside? If so, you can get in to, to pick up the remaining part of the, of the imbalance there back down to 34. Or maybe you just stayed into it and you had, say, three contracts on to two contracts here out at 30, excuse me, 737 and a half. And then you allow the last contract to trail and, uh, and, and just to kind of follow price back down to the downside. And you picked up the remaining part of what was that? Uh, three, three more points right there. So in total, you, you could have picked up, let's see, from here to here, we, we said three and then back down to, uh, to here, another three, six points right there. So again, five points, what I say? Uh, five points right here. I think I believe, or a little more, uh, five points here for sure, and then another five points um, uh, right here. Okay, five six points there. It adds up. I mean, you scalp for five points off of one lower time frame chart. It all adds up right there. Okay, but you know that's five points per contract. All right. So if you're just trading one contract, then yeah, it's just five points. Two contracts, then you pick up ten points. Right. You know, ten points right here. That have been twelve points. Ten points here. Twelve points right there. So that's twenty two points right there. OK, so it, it all adds up. Uh, but I, again, I'm not telling anyone to just uh, trade just using the 12 range or the lower time frame chart. I do it, especially when the market is ranging or, you know, if we're not really tapped into a, a higher time frame zone or a higher base zone uh, off of a higher chart, then I, I, I'll start looking at my, just my, my lower time frame and just, just kind of uh, looking for opportunities to scout. All right. People do it all the time. Trust me. But I just want to show you this because people ask me. Um, when I say that, hey, they ask, was that trade inspired by or taken just from, uh, you know, from the 12 range or was it, it was there any confluence behind it standing from a higher time frame chart? They get a little bit conf confused because they not, uh, can't quite understand how is it that I got into a trade just using the one chart. So I'm just showing you this. I'm not telling you to trade like that, but I do it, especially again, when we're not a price on the market hasn't tapped into a higher time frame zone, all right? Hopefully that clears it up. But again, that was just basically showing you uh, as a trader, you know, and I appreciate everyone who's been following the channel. But hey, do me a favor right now. If you haven't become a subscriber right now, go ahead and click that subscribe button and make sure to turn on all your post notifications so you never miss one of the uploads. I'm giving this information out to you. I'm, I'm showing you valuable ways to trade the market, great strategies um, in ways to be able to trade. We have traders, uh, trust me when I say this, that are, you know, they they were struggling and now they're becoming profitable, okay? I'm, I'm serious when I say that. Come on to the Discord, find the link down to the Discord down in the description portion of the video and ask, okay? A lot of them have become part of what I like to call the Elite Channel Membership Program. Uh, and if you wanna join, it's $6.99 a month. All you do have to do is click on that join button that you see right here in front of you, or you can move down, um, scale down or scroll down into the description portion of the video and click on the link right below the Discord link. It says become a member. Make sure when you click on that link or the join button here that you choose the tier that says Elite, uh, Elite Channel Supporter. 
or elite channel members. It's titled one or the other. Um, and uh, that way you receive all the additional perks like the trade breakdowns and the video playlist, which is a series or links of videos that I put together to videos that uh, really cover um, the the gist or the the uh, important uh, topics to the way that I actually personally trade in my own, you know, my own trading, okay? And I break things down for you so that you can understand they're great, valuable videos that, that, that people really need to watch. But again, I'm, I'm doing this for a reason because I want to see people people become um, a profitable and be consistent. And but I'm gonna tell you, you've got to understand market structure truly. And you know, if I could, if you could ask me, what are uh, two of the most important things that you really need to understand or know is or, or have is market structure and patience. Okay, if you can understand a master market structure. The next thing is really understanding the strategy and, and then then having the patience to follow through and wait for the, 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 uh, the setup to happen. But that's all I have to share with you guys today. I appreciate it. If you found value in the content within this video, please smack that like button for me. I'll see everyone in the next one.